Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Wellspin Enterprises Limited Q2 FY25 Earnings Conference Call hosted by JM Financial. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vaibhav Shah from JM Financial. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dil. Uh, on behalf of JM Financial, I welcome everybody to Q1, Q2 FI25 earnings conference call of Salesman Enterprises Limited. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Salil Bawa, uh, Group Head Investor Relations of Salesman World. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Vaibhav. Good afternoon to all of you and happy Diwali in, in advance. On behalf of Wellspun Enterprises Limited, I welcome all of you to the company's Q2 and H1 FY 2025 earnings call. Along with me, I have Mr. Sandeep Garg, Managing Director. He's, he's, call, he's taking this call from Delhi, so in case if there's any disturbance, you'll have to bear with us. I also have Mr. Soren Patel, Managing Director, Wellspun Michigan Engineers Limited, Mr. Lalit Jain, Chief Financial Officer for Wellspun Enterprises, and Mr. Siddharth Bhardwaj, Head IR for Wellspun Enterprises. We hope you have had a chance to review the investor presentation that we filed with the exchanges yesterday. It is also available on the company's website. During the discussion, we may be making references to this presentation. Would request you to take a moment to review the safe harbor statement in the presentation. As usual, we will start the forum with the opening remarks by our leadership team, and then we will open the floor for your questions. Once the call gets over, should you have any further queries that remain unanswered, please feel free to reach out to us. With that, I would now like to hand over the floor to Sandeep, MD, Wellspun Enterprises. Over to you, Sandeep. Thank you, Salil. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Wellspun Enterprises Q2 FY25 results conference call. I would like to thank all participants for their presence. We have continued on the momentum from the first quarter and have delivered consolidated total income of INR 1,798 crores in the first half of FY 2025, which is a growth of over 25% over the same period last year. This result keeps us on track to our full year FY25 target of INR 4,000 crores of consolidated income. All our projects across the water and transportation verticals as well as our subsidiary Wellspun Michigan are running as per current agreed schedules and have contributed towards this outcome. While Sorain and Wellspun, uh, uh, sorry, while Sorain from Wellspun Michigan and Lalith from Wellspun CFO will share more details on quarterly performance, I want to take this opportunity to reiterate our vision for the company over the next few years. To prepare the organization for long-term growth and succession planning, I am pleased to inform that board has approved the appointment of Mr. Abhishek Chaudhary as CEO of the company. Abhishek brings with him over two years of experience, 20, two decades of experience in policy formulation, strategy implementation, and leadership in key national initiatives such as the National Industrial Corridor Development Program, PM Gati Shakti National Master Plan, Make in India, Logistics Data Bank, Unified Logistics Interface Platform, and Yashobumi. Abhishek has proven expertise in driving strategic growth and execution. I am confident that Abhishek will bring fresh energy and vision to the company to take it to its next level. We started as a road player 
and created the water vertical six years back to build the capabilities that have resulted in close to 85% of our current order book. To add capabilities in niche area of tunneling, we acquired a majority 50.1% stake in the renamed Wellspun Michigan Engineers Limited in August 2023. I'm pleased to share that the board has approved further acquisition of 9.99% equity in WMEL for a consideration of rupees 100 crores. Once the transaction is complete, WEL will be holding more than 60% in WMEL. To add to our transformative journey, Westpan Enterprises subsidiary WMEL is all set to introduce Pan India, a revolutionary new technology developed by SmartOps UK in the area of wastewater and water treatment. With this new offering, we will create a sustainable alternative to the traditional water treatment approach, thus adding a new segment to address the huge problem of an estimated 63% of India's sewage being released untreated into the environment. Soren will be sharing more details in his opening remarks. Westpan Enterprises has moved forward as a differentiated EPC player with entry into the extremely promising segment of specialized tunneling. As detailed in our filing with the exchanges on October 8th, WL has backed a significant order from BMC, Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation of about rupees 1,989 crores for the design and construction of tertiary treated water conveyance tunnel from Dharavi Wastewater Treatment Facility to Ghatkopar Wastewater Treatment Facility, both projects being of BMC. This order is in line with our chairman's stated objective of growth and green and is an outcome of our strategy to create joint capabilities with our subsidiary Westburn, Michigan and thus enable WS entry into a new segment that has a huge opportunities across both water and transport verticals. With this new order, Westburn Enterprises standalone order book is now a formidable 13,655 crores, of which approximately 9,633 crores is from water sector, which includes approximately 4,400 crores from O&M and etc. placement. Approximately 1,989 from the newly added tunnel segment, and the balance approximately 2,033 crores is from transportation sector. In this order book, we are excluding rupees 1,850 crore of road project where we are already declared L1. Westport, Michigan has an order book of rupees 1,572 crores as on 30th September 2024, which includes orders they received of rupees 160 and rupees 25 crores in Q2 FY25. The same have been filed with the exchanges at appropriate time. This makes our consolidated order book approximately rupees 15,200 crores, thus giving us immense visibility to ramp up our execution in the years to come. We remain positive on future bidding across our verticals and our subsidiary. We have mapped out opportunities across water supply, sewage treatment plant, solutions, water transmission, and road boat, boot projects. This gives me confidence to share that we should be ending the current fiscal with an order book in the range of rupees 17,000 to rupees 20,000 crores at a consolidated level. On back of this strong order book that we envisage, we now expect the revenue growth on a consolidated basis to be around 20 to 22% over the period of FY25 to FY27. 
We at Wellspin Enterprise have a large team of over 400 experienced engineers, besides various other teams across different departments, that are highly motivated and work together in creating a unique organization. I am proud to share that Wellspun Enterprises has been recognized as one of the best workplaces for millennials by Great Place to Work in last quarter. I truly believe that we have laid a solid organizational foundation to propel Wellspun Enterprise consolidated revenue to reach in the range of a billion dollar in the next few years. WL and its subsidiary, Westburn, Michigan, have consistently pushed boundaries, setting new benchmarks in quality and execution with unwavering commitment to excellence, innovation, and transformative impact in the industry. This approach has continued to get recognitions, and I will briefly touch upon some of them. Westburn, Michigan Engineers Limited, has been awarded Best Brand in Construction and Infrastructure for Water Infrastructure at the 9th ET Now Infra Focus Summit and Awards 2024 for its pioneering innovative approaches in urban water solutions, particularly through underground construction and delivering projects that minimize disruption to lives of people living close by and also the environmental impact. Our work at Bharavi Wastewater Treatment Facility, VRP and SNRP have been recognized for various safety initiatives. Construction World Global Awards 2024 has conferred Westburn Enterprise with the award for valuable industry contribution. During the quarter, we continued with our efforts for development of oil and gas field blocks housed in the joint venture Adani Westburn Exploration Limited and we had few meetings with the regulator for approval of our field development plan for block MBOSN 2005 by 2, generally called by us as Mumbai block. We expect the FTP to be approved in the current quarter. With this, I now hand over the call to Mr. Soren Patel, MD of Westburn, Michigan Engineers Private Limited. Over to you, Sorin. Thank you, Sandeep. Good afternoon and greetings to all for the festive season. At the outset, I'm very happy to share that Wellspun Michigan is all set to introduce a revolutionary new technology in the area of water treatment through Wellspun Smart Ops. With this new business, we endeavor to create an alternative approach to address the huge problem of an estimated 63% of India's sewage being released untreated into the environment. This pioneering new technology is modular, scalable, cost efficient, and easy to deploy in a water body or drain point to rejuvenate or recycle the water. This includes tertiary and portable water for commercial and domestic use. With an extremely small footprint, which is up to one-fifth of conventional technologies, a reduced deployment time of 90 days for a 15 MLD plant, more than two years, which is more than two years for conventional technology-based plants, this will be a significantly cost-efficient technology. The scalability and ease of transfer offered by this technology will open up new business opportunities and thus augment our future order flows. I am extremely happy to share that we have received a first project order to deploy new technology which has been disclosed to the stock exchanges. Our order book as of September 30th is INR 1572 crores with INR 170 crores of operations and maintenance. We have received the LOA for the project where we were L1 in the last quarter. This order book entails 21 projects, which are spread across micro tunneling and segment tunneling, marine works, pumping station construction, rehabilitation of sewer lines, and bridge construction, and is largely executable over the next 36 months. 
our water pipeline is healthy. And with the rollout of the new technologies that I mentioned, we retain our sights on a big pipeline worth INR 50,000 crores in the medium term. These projects will be bid for on a selective basis, either directly by Wellspun Michigan or through Wellspun Enterprises Limited. Coming to the key financials of the concluded quarter, WMEL has delivered revenue of INR 104 crores, thus taking our H1 FY25 revenue to INR 248 crores, marking growth of 47%. I'm confident we will continue the execution momentum into the financial year and endeavor to better the guided 30% growth for FY25. This performance has been consistent from a margin perspective. Reporting EBITDA margin works out to approximately 22% for Q2 FY25. The new order wins and our current projects give me immense confidence of sustaining these margin levels. We have been an engineering solution provider for urban infrastructure needs, which is a niche area, and we wish to operate in the specialized niche areas of tunneling and water rehabilitation projects on a much larger scale. Our year-old association with Wellspun Enterprises Limited has resulted in the opening of new avenues of EPC projects, and thus we see vastly larger opportunities ahead. These opportunities are both from new geographies, due to Wellspun Enterprises' wide reach, as well as new initiatives that we are evaluating, such as working with new technologies like smart ops. With this, I will close my remarks and hand the call to Lalit Jain, CFO of Elspan Enterprises Limited, for updates on financials. Thank you. Over to you, Lalit. Thank you, Sharin. Good afternoon to everyone, and many thanks for being part of this call. As our MD Chair, in complete basis, we have delivered Rs. 838 crore of total income for Q2 FI25 against Rs. 693 crores in Q2 FI24 which is a growth of 21% year over year. The H1 FI25 considered income is Rs. 1798 crore, which is a growth of 25% over H1 FI24. Our considered EBITDA for Q2 FI25 is Rs. 150 crore against Rs. 130 crore in Q2 FI24, thus marking 16% growth year over year. This EBITDA works, up, works to a margin of 17.9%. Our considered EBT before exceptional item for the quarter has grown by 5% to rupees 102 crores. Our considered profit after tax for the quarter is rupees 62 crore against rupees 69 crore in Q2 FI24, which is a drop of 11% year over year. Please note, considered paid drop is largely on account of post tax reduction of Rs. 12 crore from discontinued operation of our Mukherba Chowk Panipat Road project. This is a national loss and does not have any cash flow impact as we are holding our investment in this SPV for sale at pre-agreed price at active highway. On the general basis, for Q2 FI25, total income is Rs. 688 crore. 99 crore, profit before tax on a standalone basis, rupees 87 crore, while paid is at rupees 65 crore. I am happy to share that we have closed out the short term borrowing which had been utilized towards working capital needs. We have a strong balance sheet as demonstrated by our standalone network of rupees 2533 crores. We remain debt free on a standalone basis with cash reserve of rupees 866 crore, which will allow us to grow the business to the next level. I would also like to inform that company was previously focusing on the road project, which accounted for a significant portion of its revenue. However, in recent quarters, the order book has diversified to include projects in the water, wastewater, tunneling and rehabilitation sectors, along with the acquisition of Wells Michigan Engineers Limited. To reflect this expanded portfolio, management has decided to do the segmental reporting starting with Q2 FI25 
for each vertical, namely water, transport, tunneling and rehabilitation. I would like to take you all through the segment wise revenue numbers for the Q2 FI25. Out of total operational revenue of rupees 789 crore, rupees 379 comes from transport and water contribute rupees 304 crore and the balance of rupees 105 crores is being contributed by tunneling and rehabilitation works. With this, we can open the forum for question and answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Park Thakur from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, so, hi. Thank you for this opportunity. So, I would just like to ask the management if they can throw some light on the new water project, water tunneling project from Garavi to Ghatkopur. And when do we expect to start booking revenue in that? So, uh, sorry, Sandeep? Yeah, sorry, and please take this call. Mm, question, please. Um, the uh, the it is the tertiary treated water conveyance tunnel from Dharavi wastewater treatment facility to Garkopar wastewater treatment facility, and um, it is approximately 8.45 kilometers long. It is at a depth of 152 meters, and uh, involves the construction of two shafts, one at Dharavi and one at Garkopar, and no coming up for air in the middle. Um, each shaft is uh, between 10 to 14 meters in diameter, and the average depth is 150 meters. So uh, we are supposed to do the uh, tunneling using a open board full phase of PM, and uh, there is a lining process involved to convey the water. The uh, revenue will begin being booked from FY25 at a lower, lower end, simply because we have to wait for some clearances and permissions that will be required as this is part of a CRZ zone, etc. Uh, okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you for that. And also, can you guide me for the CAPEX guidance for the next, for this year and next financial year? And also, how much have we done till now in first half of FY25? We CAPEX for this project or for the company as a well? No, no, uh, consolidated level, CAPEX. And also if you can guide me for the standalone level as well. Okay, uh, basically at WA level, because that's a big Sorry uh, to interrupt, sir. Um, could you uh, come a bit close to your handset? There's a lot of cracking from your end. Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes. Much better. Okay. Uh, in terms of CAPEX, at Westman Enterprises level, we are asset-like company. We don't have major uh, CAPEX. However, uh, around 100 crore rupees uh, uh, CAPEX will be used for this uh, new project through Westman, Michigan. Uh, no, sir. I was asking on the consolidated level for the whole, so not just for this project. It will be same, similar. Okay. And how much have we done till now in the first half? No, not not a back skill now. Okay, cool. Thank you. Those were my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dinesh from Finsight. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, you know giving me the opportunity and uh, you know a really great set of numbers. Uh, so my question is, uh, like say we have acquired you know this new stake in Michigan company. Uh, what is the time for this uh, across India? I mean, like how uh, large this could become uh, on its own? Because I doubt, like, how many, you know, uh, like the kind of uh, almost 2,000 crore, you no, know, one project. But like, how many such kind of orders uh, across India we, we can, you know, think of uh, at, a, at a larger scale? I want to know. Yeah. So uh, just to give you an idea, uh, the hello. Tunneling, tunneling business uh, across various sizes is, is to the tune of 
at least our mapped uh, projects are to the tune of about 3 lakh crores uh, over a period of next 5 to 7 years. Okay, and uh, what is the probability of, you know, we are getting, uh, like say, 3 lakh, maybe 10%, 20% is, uh, what is that we can target? Out? I mean, I'm sorry. I don't think, Not all will go I don't forward. think we, 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 we are going to that level of 10, 20 uh, percentages. A single digit few uh, percentages is what we will target. Okay, so sounds great. Uh, and, and sir, how about uh, water uh, treatment, you know, and sewage? Uh, another so, segment as we will look at, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the 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 opportunities in uh, uh, water treatment plant and all the businesses across water, including tunneling, etc. Uh, we are, we have as uh, the tunneling itself, what we are tra targeting is in the range of about 50,000 crores. At a water, at a macro level, we are targeting projects of about 3 lakh crores over a mid-term period. Okay, sir, sounds great. And sir, you mentioned that we are looking at uh, like a billion dollar revenue maybe in the next few years. Uh, what kind of uh, you know EBITDA margins or PAT margins you would try to you know uh, you know to go for? We 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 always target EBITDA margins uh, at the at around 15 to 16 percent um, at a standalone basis and uh, about 16 to 17 on a consolidated basis for at least next three four years. Okay, sir. That really sounds great, Sandra. Thank you very much, and happy Diwali. Thank you. And I'll get back Thank to you. Happy Diwali as well. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Vishal Periwal from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, so thanks uh, for the opportunity. Uh, so first on this uh, Michigan uh, acquisition that we have done, in terms of valuation-wise, uh, uh, I mean, like in a 12 months back, uh, the valuation when we paid it was sub three in the dot crore. Now it is uh, almost like thousand or crore. So, what exactly has gone uh, in in our uh, assumption uh, that has led to this uh, increase? So, uh, the original transaction was then at a, about four uh, x to or uh, four times the EV to bid the. Uh, while the industry is uh, operating at about nine. Uh, times. So if you are to do about nine times, we still believe that the, um, whatever is the forecasted for FY25, it is still a cheap, uh, cheaper option to buy. And as we said, we have a large vision for uh, Westman, uh, Michigan. Uh, we believe that we can grow it to scale, uh, much larger scale. So that's something strategic decision the board has taken to acquire it at uh, equity valuation of 1,000 crores, which we believe is still undervalued for us. Okay, okay, got it. So, so valuation is one sector that is uh, probably late, and definitely like uh, earlier it was maybe like FI24, now it has moved to FI25 as a valuation yeah. parameter, so broadly, yeah. correct? That is correct. And uh, also we, we, we are aware of the strategic decisions that we are making. We see a lot of growth coming to the to Westman, Michigan. Got it, sir. And then, uh, uh, in terms of our O&M order book uh, that we have reported, um, uh, what is the execution time frame for this uh, part of the uh, order book? So, the order book of uh, operation and maintenance spans out over 10 to 15 years, uh, okay. depending upon the project. Right, right. Uh, okay. And in terms of a couple of uh, accounting, uh, uh, I know that the changes of probably the segments of reporting that we have done, uh, in Tansol, uh, the Michigan is booked in which segment? Tunneling and rehabilitation. Sorry, sir? Tunneling and rehabilitation. Okay, got it. And uh, uh, I mean, if one has to understand the ONM, uh, probably the ONM, uh, the revenue that we book, so will this be part of water in the segment? So it is respective, uh, respective vertical. Water is in water and tunneling is in tunneling. So we don't have a separate segment for OM, ONM right now. So it is not significant right now. If the revenues from OM will become significant, we will start reporting it under as a separate segment itself. But right now it is booked under these various uh, segments that we have defined. 
as transport, water, and tunneling and rehabilitation. Okay, okay. Maybe a, a ballpark number. Uh, what is the when uh, revenue contribution in terms of percentage to the console of the stand alone? If you can help and provide. I think it's significant. I think negligible just now. Okay. Okay. Uh, got it. And uh, uh, maybe one last thing. Uh, uh, so I think uh, there was a couple of uh, project road assets which government was earlier, uh, the, the, the PMO has approved and they were uh, supposed to come for bidding. So any industry update that you have, like, you know, any timeline uh, that you see about the TGA uh, from, from uh, I mean, like, the ministry or any like, industry that we can provide? So I think the movement on those projects have started. Uh, we understand uh, about six, 15, 16 uh, projects were cleared at the SFCs. So we expect those projects to hit uh, uh, the bidding uh, situation in the, over the next couple of years, a couple of months uh, going forward. Okay, sure, sir. Uh, I'll come back in the queue for more. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kashu Changotia from JRK Group. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, my question is that we understand that September quarter remains seasonal, seasonally weak for the company. But, sir, can you please explain and throw some light on what is the main reason behind the margins contracting this year? So, why is it not clear, ma'am? Okay, sorry, I'll repeat. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah. Yeah, so my question is that we understand that the September quarter remains seasonally weak for the company. But what is the main reason behind margin contractions for this year? Basically, this is monsoon quarter. So in intra industries, uh, September quarter is always uh, at lower side. And where the turnover is also low, the fixed expenses remain fixed, so that's why the uh, margin is low. So there are there are two. Just to add to what Lalit is saying, there is uh, relatively no um, no contraction of margins if you see in any uh, parameter other than something which is uh, we are booking a loss on a, a asset where we are, which is a held for sale asset and it's pre, on a pre-agreed price. Otherwise, the uh, margins have grown, and it is normal for um, you know some contractions to take place in terms of the percentages because the fixed fixed costs are apportioned on a lower uh, revenue base. Okay. And sir, I have another question. Please. So we have. Uh uh, like you said, I mean, uh, from the presentation also, we have observed that the company has emerged as the lowest bidder for various projects. So, uh, what are the margins that we keep in such uh, bidding that allows us to become the L1? So, we, uh, as I said, there is one project of road where we are L1, which is of the value of 1,850 crores. And uh, the road uh, vertical gives an... Uh, the EBITDA margins in the in the regions of uh, about 14 15 percent uh, which is uh, what we would uh, provide for in all our fits okay sir thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Prati Bandari from Art Ventures please go ahead yeah hi sir thanks for the opportunity I just wanted to understand the, that uh, the total O&M order book size is 4,400 crores, comprising both Michigan and uh, uh, Wellspun Enterprise. No, this is only for Wellspun Enterprises. For what? 4,400 crores. And what about Michigan? 170. In Michigan, we have 170 crores uh, by number. 170 crores. All right. And what would be the execution timeline for this uh, consolidated order book that stands in our books? That is 15,200 crores. In, in terms of the, uh, we talk about the operation and maintenance, it will take 10 to 15 years. Uh, a new project which we got for the Dharavi Gatko bulbs, again for 9 years project. So different, uh, uh, different, different projects having different, different uh, uh, timelines. Okay. So the, so depending upon the vertical that we are dealing with, uh, typically, 
the tra road uh, or transport is uh, something that be, where the revenues are recognized between three and three and a half years or on an average or, uh, out. In the water, it is somewhere between four to five years, and tunneling is between five to eight years is the average time that you will take uh, to recognize the revenue. So four to five years for water, five to eight for tunneling, and for road EPC. So road EPC is about two and a half to three and a half, depending upon the size. So that's the kind of uh, uh, project. Yes, sir, it's better now. Yeah. Okay. So what was the order inflow for this quarter? So uh, for this quarter we, we had an order inflow of uh, the tunneling uh, in the WEL level of about uh, how much is that? 1900. So 1989 crore we got this uh, got, got covered project and uh, 25 crore is from the Michigan? No, 160. 160 crore in the Michigan. Yeah. 160 in Michigan and 1985 in WEN. Correct, correct. All right, all right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Yash Thedia from Max Capital. Please go ahead. Um, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so, first question is, uh, if I look at your segmental reporting, your EBIT has come down a lot in the tunneling segment despite 47% growth. So, what could be the reason behind that? In the segment, if you talk about this, uh, we are reporting that uh, this is a, is a subsidy company. So, this margin is after the depreciation and interest. That's why it is lower. First margin is if you talk EBITDA margin is 21%. Sir, why EBIT has come down from 13 crore to 10 and a half in your segmental reporting? That is what I am asking. Yeah, 13 to 10, there, is, there are two reasons. One, uh, in this quarter, uh, there were some GST claims earlier which we, we, are, uh, we are recognizing that as a revenue. Uh, in this quarter, we have decided to go conservative and we will not recognizing any claims until unless them is getting realized. Okay, so some one-time things have done. Yeah. And, and second, uh, what is the status of the MSRDC project where we were L1? Why have we not included that in our order book? Any doubts on the final uh, sort of uh, um, project is coming to us? No, I think the, we are L1. The, the issue is the... the um, there are elections, the model, uh, model uh, uh, code of conduct has clicked in. We expect it to be awarded post the election process is over. Okay, but in case uh, in case there is a regime change, is there a doubt on this project being awarded to the parties uh, as of now? We, we, we foresee no such risk at this point in time, however, Governments are governments, so they will take their own call because this this project is needed the to connect the already uh, connect built uh, highway by NHAI. So I I think it will be a necessity that will have to be fulfilled. Okay, and coming to the margins, so you know you, if I look at your standalone now, I accept that there's some seasonality in quarter two, but even one H to one H. Our contribution to water segment is increasing, but our EBITDA margin, excluding other income, has fallen by 100 basis points. And similarly, even in uh, even in the Michigan uh, business, we are seeing that the EBITDA margins have come uh, come down from 24-25 to 22 percent. So, what is the reason reason behind the margin fall in both these businesses? So I think the, the 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 more important thing is on uh, to look at the margins that we have guided towards the annual. The the quarterly results can be skewed because based on the project which has delivered more revenue. Uh, certain projects are have more uh, profitability, certain have lesser. So this is a amalgamation that you are looking at. So I would uh, request uh, you to look at the guidance for the complete year, and uh, from that perspective, if you look at it, it it is 
it is something which is in line with our, our guidance the other thing that i would want to uh, uh, reiterate is there are certain notional losses uh, okay th those are console level so that that is relevant another thing sir uh, there was also some claims uh, in the last financial year that is the uh, reason earlier uh, last year was a higher margin in terms of beta margin this time yes. claims are still there but it is a lower side so this is the reason mainly there is a difference of almost 25 30 crores because of one one time yeah. which was there in the last year correct there was a claim in last year uh, with a higher amount and this time also we have claims but it is lower amount so there is a differential due to that uh, margin is coming down okay now coming to the road sector you know we have been also sort of hearing from not just you but other companies as well that finally we will see light at the end of the tunnel and we will get the project awarded by nhai but uh, seems that there has been some inordinate delay in that so so what is the sense on you know when we will, we can expect major projects being awarded by nhai and will we also be looking into that Yeah, yeah, see, the necessity exists. It's only a question of that. Last year, they had awarded substantial, substantial orders, and they, they have. If you know, if you if you notice that um, NHI last year did the, the highest uh, award, the high, highest execution, highest spend uh, across uh, ever since it has come into existence. So I think there is a bit of a um, slowdown, but um, that's something which is temporary. the need continues to exist so there there may be certain things that they are looking at the drawing going back to the drawing board as to how to make bot successful etc etc so which is delaying the process so i i think it's just a matter of um, a quarter or so that uh, they will be back on uh, the uh, awarding spree let's go sir and just one final I'm sorry question. to interrupt sir uh, please fall back in the queue Thank for you. further questions thank you The next question is from the line of Kostub Shah from Malford PMS. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my question and congratulations on the good numbers and the order book. I had a question on the smart ops, uh, you know, uh, GB that uh, has been uh, announced. So, in terms of, uh, I just want to understand the economics. How does it work? Uh, and uh, you know, what are the business plans for this? How do we? Uh, kind of no model the revenue and what are your expectations for FY26 uh, from this that is my first question so <clears throat> smart ops fundamentally is a transformative process dealing with wastewater at the location where it is generated and so this can be applied at like we like i said in my opening remarks at uh, various sewers various lakes various ponds various drains or even to retrofit uh, existing uh, stps um uh, eventually to be applied even in housing societies um and uh, fundamentally we aim to treat industrial effluent also with this so it's it's a very wide applicability of this technology and uh, obviously uh, the the ticket size of each depending upon the size of the plant required at each location it will be very different it can range from half a 0.5 mld but the modularity allows it to go up to hundreds of mld up to say 5 600 mld of plants so uh, the scalability is there and we aim to gear up at a reasonable pace the uh, having acquired the first project uh, at uh, the temple town of pandarpur for 10 mld uh we hope that uh, completing that within a period of 90 to 120 days will give us uh, the visibility that this technology is a very speedy modular and applicable technology with high visibility so the guidance for 20 25 26 uh, right now we we hope that uh, we will be in the uh, uh, 50 to 150 mld range and um, that the uh, gearing and the uh, upward trajectory for this applicability will continue as more and more clients come to appreciate uh, the speed and the efficiency with which it can deliver uh, results okay uh, thanks and this uh, first project of tenemld at pandarpur so what is the uh, total uh, no, uh, cost of this project 
if I understand the the tamadhi the tender has been that the the award price for us which has been disclosed to the stock exchanges is uh, uh, approximately 25 crores okay and the uh, tentative margin so that we'll be earning on this uh and the tentative margins will be again uh, depending upon the size of the uh, project in the sense if you have a smaller project uh, uh, it will carry a different margin and as the project ticket size uh, the mld size increases it will carry a different margin so i would give you a range uh, the the uh, margin ranges can can go from 20 to uh, 30 35% okay great great and uh, another question was on the oil block because uh, if i uh, heard right uh, uh, you said that the oil block uh, approval should come in by this quarter uh, uh, so is that correct that is correct we are we are pushing for that yes yeah. okay great uh, so in that uh, case if the uh, approvals do come in uh, are we looking at any further capex or, or what are the plans over there let's want to understand on that so we we would uh, we would be open to both uh, suggestion and this is subject to the board's approval of capital allocation to uh, do a, a farm in uh, as well as execute the project on our own depending upon the board's guidance okay sir great thank you that's it from my side thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of dinesh from finside please go ahead uh, hello sir can you hear me how do yes Yeah. Uh, thank you for giving me another opportunity, sir. Uh, so actually, I joined a few minutes late. Maybe I missed out, uh, you know, something late uh, in the issue. Can you just give me a uh, guidance for this financial year? Like, are we expecting something like close to four thousand crores in sales, right? And uh, what would be the EBITDA margins we are looking at? So the guidance uh, or our target for this year, FY25, at a consolidated level, is four thousand crores. Yep. And as I, in a, at a console level, the reporting EBITDA margins should be in the range of 16 to 17 percent. Okay, so that's great. Uh, and sir, uh, actually, I was looking at your balance sheet in uh, big detail, and uh, you mentioned we have uh, some cash of around uh, 866 crores or something. But uh, what is this? Uh, you know, how does the balance sheet look like? Uh, but that's I think uh, on a standalone basis. Uh, but how? What about the consolidated level? Like, what's the debt here, and uh, what's the Uh, net cash we have. Uh, yeah, you could just give some guidance. Yes, at console level. Just a minute, I will explain. Console level debt is one thousand fifteen crore. We have debt, and we have a case of nine twenty four crore. Okay, so so somewhere around six hundred crores or something uh, net debt, right? That that's what. No, net debt is uh, approximately ninety uh, crore only. Okay, nice. Okay, and uh, we are planning to pay off this, uh, or like, how, what's the, you know, because we want to be some net cash. Yeah. No, no, no. This model is basically we are constructing the hybrid NED model, so where uh, uh, normally 80-20 is that of the uh, remaining cost after reimbursing by NHI. So always there will be debt. Debt will be getting uh, going to increase once project is we are constructing the Sanapi project, Natapuram project in south. south. It is having around thousand crore uh, debt. We have drawn only three eighty five crore right now, uh, so it will be get going to increase. So it, it will be never debt debt free at uh, console level. It will be we will debt free at the standalone level, not at console level. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, sir, just one last question from my end. See, we I see the you know uh, our subcontracting charges are uh, almost a thousand crore for this uh, you know first half and uh, out of the fifteen hundred crores of total expenses. Uh, my, my point is, sir, like, uh, is it not possible for us to just squeeze this further and you know, uh, by doing the lot of work by ourselves and uh, uh, can we get higher margin here? Uh, you know? uh, I hope you are getting my question. Well, like, what I am trying to yeah. you know, ask. So, so the question is self-execution of construction. Yeah. Right. The answer is that at the board level, this issue was considered and we we decided to stay with the asset light model that we have chosen. Because once you do the construction yourself, a lot of money goes into buying the construction equipment, etc., etc. Your EBITDA margins are slightly better, but if you look at the PAT level, the PAT level margins for us are best in class kind of numbers. 
because there are no financial charges and there is very little depreciation. So my my request to the um, um, analyst committee, uh, uh, community, and uh, investors would be to not only look at the EBITDA numbers, but also to look at the PAT numbers, which is the true uh, mon uh, money available for the investors. Uh, of, okay. From the that's, company side. Yes. That's great, sir. And I'm just was the last point, you know, I'd like to close here. Uh, we are saying we are you know, constructing this Dara V2 Ghatkopar uh, project uh, roughly around 8 to 9 kilometers. Uh, you know, uh, the construction is required. Uh, my question is like we have Wellspun Corp as our, uh, you know, in the pipes business, we will definitely need uh, DI pipes here. I, I'm assuming that. Uh, no. So, is, is there any, uh, you know, uh, just uh, you know, if you could, you know, elaborate something on this? Sandeep, man? I don't think, I don't, yeah, sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, we, we really have no DI pipe requirements here in this project. It's a TBM tunnel, uh, concrete lined uh, tunnel. And whatever, whatever vertical uh, delivery pipes are required are made out of steel. Oh, okay, fine. Because, because I'm an investor in Wilson Corp as well, so I was uh, more interested in understanding if there is any uh, mutual synergies uh, no, uh, available no. in the business. No. Okay. Okay, that's great, sir. Thank you. Thanks very much. In that. Thank All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Co. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar sir, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. you are. Namaskar. Yes, no, sir. Sir, uh, firstly, sir, if you could throw some light on the EPC part of the story with the uh, Uttar Pradesh State Water and Sanitation Mission. I think the 2900 crore is what has been outlined in your presentation. So, uh, in the segment revenue, uh, where have we clubbed it and how much revenue have we booked uh, and what is the timeline for closure of the project? Uh, Swedish, uh, take the question, sir. Yeah, you take the financial part of the question. So, basically, in the water vertical, we have booked the revenue of 304 crore uh, in this quarter. Uh, with, with respect to project progress, uh, Sanjeev sir will explain you, sir. So, um, coming to the, uh, when do we expect the project to complete? We expect in another um, 18 months or so, the project to complete. Okay, and out of this 304 crore, uh, the entire amount is attributed to this project only? No, no, this is not entirely we have water segment, so we have a uh, Tharavi project also, we have UPJM, we have uh, uh, other water projects also. For the, particularly for this UP state, I want, uh, what is the uh, pro uh, state when a speed at, at which the project is being executed? Yes, this, this, uh, project wise, if you want, uh, we can discuss offline, please. Okay, but it will take 18 months for this project to uh, complete, that is 2900 yeah. revenue, so, so. That, yeah. So more than 50% of the revenue has already been recognized, around 50% has been recognized, the balance will take time. Okay. And sir, uh, then coming to uh, the breakup uh, for this quarter, we find uh, the trans under the transport segment, the revenue of 380 crore, and the comparative number for June quarter was 534 crore. So how should one read this uh, split? Going for H2 also, if you could give us some color how, uh, with this being a seasonally a lean quarter, uh, what should we expect in terms of the revenue profile?